Hey guys, welcome to my shop. My name is Lainey Shaughnessy and today I want to talk to you about the Super Smart Routing Kit from Eureka Zone. I'm going to call it by its acronym the SSRK. Now the SSRK is my go-to tool for routing rabbits, dados, grooves, pockets, and a variety of other routing tasks that I need to do whether I'm in the shop or out in the field. Its portability makes it ideal for both situations. Now what I want to talk to you about today is when you first receive your SSRK, I want to guide you through the uh, setup of installing your router and everything. And then I want to talk to you about a few quick tips to help you with precision setups for your various routing jobs. And we're going to talk about some different things that I do when I'm routing my rabbits, my grooves, and my dados. And the one thing that I like about the SSRK is that it has these Y limit stops that limit the Y axis and they are also ideal for quick and simple setups. Now to go through what we're about to go through today, what you need is your SSRK and you, I'm sure you've taken it out of the box by now and you'll notice it comes in two pieces. You've got the Super Smart Routing Kit base and then you have the main arm of the SSRK and that's where the Y limit stops are and this is the part that mounts on the guide rail and runs back and forth. Now not many people know this but the Super Smart Routing Kit is universal. It not only works on the Eureka Zone guide rail but it's also universal for the Makita guide rail as well if you happen to have one of those. Now the Super Smart Routing Kit uh, base is meant to when your router is mounted on here it's meant to replace the sub base of your router so we'll be removing that in just a minute to mount it on to the super smart routing kit base once we have it mounted on the base and the main arm of the system just slide together and lock in with these wing nuts here now for this setup for this quick and simple setup what we need are a couple of things i've got a sharpie here I've got a two inch hole saw and we'll talk about what that's for in just a minute. And then what you'll need is a drill bit and countersink or a combination drill bit and countersink like I have here for drilling the screw holes that will mount the router to the base plate. So first thing you want to do is pick the router that you want to use and the SSRK works well with both fixed and plunge based routers. Now my personal preference is a plunge based router and the reason for that is when I'm performing my routing jobs a plunge based router allows me to quickly set my depths and when I'm finished routing I can lift up and raise my router bit up above my workpiece and slide back and forth on the guide rail uh, with ease and simplicity. So I prefer a plunge based router but again it works both with a plunged and a fixed base router. And what you want to do is you want to set your router onto the base plate and you want to center it uh, from side to side. You want to make sure that the router is centered and then you want to make sure that it's in a position that once mounted you still have access to these wing nuts on this main arm of the base plate here so you can raise and adjust the Z axis. So you want to be able to have access to these wing nuts and you want to be able to spin them freely. You don't want your router interfering with it. And um, I like my router and it doesn't matter what position you put on, but on this particular, my particular router here, I like to have it angled about like a uh, 45 degree. And I like my plunge arm, my plunge lever here, and my power switch here. And again, how you position the router is up to you as far as what you're comfortable with. Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of is that when you're driving the SSRK, you're not driving it by the handles of the router, you know, how you're used to when you're using the router freehand. You are actually driving it by the base uh, that slides on the guide rail. You wanna place your hand here, the, your other hand can be on the router, you know, on one of the router handles and all, just as, you know, uh, place a holder for your hand, but you're not going to be steering with it or, or, or sliding back and forth. All of your movement and everything is going to be done by controlling the base here, all your back and forth movement and everything. So I like to position mine like at a 45 degree angle. I make sure that uh, the position of it, I still have access to my wing nuts. Once I have that, then I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I've got a blue Sharpie here. It'll show up slightly on my black base, um, but uh, if you have you know, a, a different color Sharpie, it doesn't matter. Um, once you have it centered and in position, just take and trace 
the outline of your base of the router and just get it traced out make sure you can see your line well once you have it traced out make an identifying mark so we can make sure that the we align everything up back the way it is because we're just going to be using the base plate for the next step i like to right on the front you know somewhere just make a little mark on the actual router base plate and on the ssrk base plate because there's that's going to be my alignment marks when i put the router plate back on i can uh, line those two marks and know that i'm in the same position so once that's done next thing you do is just basically turn your router over make sure it's unplugged and everything and let's go ahead and remove the base plate all right with the base plate removed off of the router these screws that you remove to remove the base plate we're going to reuse those to mount the router to the ssrk base so set those aside we'll be using those in just a moment what you want to do is go ahead and take your uh, router plate and put it back onto the ssrk base and align those registration marks that you made to make sure that everything is in the appropriate position make sure that your outline and everything is registered correctly and then i'm going to just use an awl and i am going to mark the center of the mounting holes that where the screws came out of so I'm going to hold the router plate still so it doesn't shift around. And I'm just going to poke and mark the center of those mounting holes. So now it's going to be difficult for you to see, but I've got three clear identifying marks where I need to drill my holes. And you want to next use a drill bit and a countersink or a separate drill bit and countersink, whichever one you choose to use. And we're going to go ahead and drill those holes out. But I do not want to drill the countersink on the top side. We're going to actually drill that on the bottom side once I get some through holes through there so I can identify where I need to countersink and all. Because our countersink needs to be on the bottom side so our screws will sit below the base of the SSRK base okay okay so now with those three holes drilled went ahead and turned over my base plate so I'm at the working off of the bottom and now I want to go ahead and I want to countersink and I just want to countersink deep enough that my screw holes my mounting screws uh, will sit below the surface of the SSRK base Okay, so with the three countersinks done, a couple of things you want to keep in mind. One, when you're running that countersink, make sure that you're aware of your depth and you don't go all the way through the base plate here. The second thing is, is depending on the mounting screws, uh, you want to make sure that once you countersink that uh, you are deep enough that the screws will actually go through the base plate and into the router to secure the router. And if you notice, these mounting screws, they're quite short. Um, and uh, they've got a short shaft on them and everything so I made sure that I was deep enough that I'll be able to go through and get some threads into that router and everything for mounting so with that done all we need to do now is actually mount the router to the base plate okay once you've got the router mounted to the SSRK base what you want to do next is we need to create the through hole for the router bit now if you notice on the base plate that came off of the router, you notice you have this hole here. Uh, and it's a pretty big hole because what it allows you to do, it allows you to see around your router bit clearly. So that when you are lining up your router or you're working with lines and everything, you can see those lines clearly you know, through the base. We want to simulate that in the SSRK base. So I've got a two inch hole saw with just a little bit smaller than this hole I don't need to go exactly the same size but it'll be the perfect size for me and on the uh, guide bit of the hole saw bit it's a quarter inch bit so I have got a quarter inch router bit in my router and I've got a sacrificial piece of wood that I can set my router on and we'll go ahead and plug it in And 
And what we want to do now is we want to plunge through uh, so that we can make a guide hole for where the router bit is for the center of the router bit and everything. I've got my depth set so I can plunge through the base of the SSRK, but I won't plunge completely through my sacrificial board here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now I have a clear hole through my base plate that will guide my hole saw bit. All right, so with the router unplugged again, what we need to do now is we need to drill the two inch hole through the base plate. And in order to do that, we wanna make sure that we take the base plate off of the router because we don't wanna to try to, you know, just go from the bottom down or anything like that. So we wanna take a minute, just unthrew the, unscrew the three screws and remove the base plate, and then we'll drill the through hole. And now, if you've got a drill press, you can take this over to the drill press, put your hole saw in, go ahead and drill it through, or you can simply just use a drill with your hole saw bit. Either method works fine. Now what I want to do is I'm going to secure the router plate so I can drill through uh, and um, not have to worry about it shifting and everything that way i can make sure that my drill is staying straight up and down so i've simply got a clamp here just clamping the router plate to my bench and go ahead and drill that out All right, so with the hole cut out now, this is going to give me a good visual around my router bit so I can see my lines or marks or registration marks on my material and everything so when I'm doing my setup. And it's a good representation of the hole that was in the original router plate. So the only thing left to do is to mount the base of the Super Smart Router Kit back onto the router and that completes the initial setup of the super smart routing kit all right guys well that takes care of this easy smart quick tip and the initial setup of the super smart routing kit in the next quick tip we're going to talk about the y limit stops as well as the x limit stops and some helpful aids to help you set up for your dados rabbits and grooves and get precise results each and every time Till next time I'll see you soon.